to. Welcome back, everybody. We are in the second half of the mock draft extravaganza. We're going to be wrapping up with picks 9 through 16. Just a small rundown. We're going to run down our first eight picks very quickly. Deirdre, I'll go first. Uh, Number one pick, I have the Bengals taking Joe Burrow, QB out of LSU. Number two, Redskins taking Chase Young, Edge uh, from Ohio State. Lions at number three, picking Jeff Okuda, cornerback out of Ohio State. At number four, I have the Giants taking Isaiah Simmons, linebacker out of Clemson. Number five pick, I got the Dolphins taking Tua Tagovailoa, quarterback from Alabama. Number six pick, I got the Chargers taking Justin Herbert, quarterback out of Oregon. Number seven, Panthers are taking Javion Kinlaw, D lineman from South Carolina. And where we left off, I had number eight. Arizona Cardinals taking Andrew Thomas, offensive lineman out of Georgia. I'll run down mine real quick as well. We got number one, Cincinnati taking Joe Burrow out of LSU. Got Washington taking Chase Young out of the Ohio State University. We have oh you a trade. <laughs> we got uh, a trade alert with Detroit trading back to. Five and Miami getting their quarterback of the future to a tag of a low up his name. Uh, then we got <laughs> then we got for four we got Los Angeles Chargers taking Justin Herbert with the trade. Giants receive the sixth pick and the second and a, their second round pick. I have Detroit with number five taking Jeff Akuda. Number six, the New York Giants. Selecting Isaiah Simmons. Number seven, the Panthers. Selecting Derek Brown. Number eight, Arizona. Selecting Tristan Wirfs. All right. So now we are on number nine pick, the Jaguars. Who do you have the Jaguars selecting? All right. I think this is my first one. I don't have the Jacksonville Jaguars selecting anybody at number nine. Ooh, who you got? My trade alert. I have a sneaky team slipping into the number nine seed. I have the Eagles taking over the number nine spot. Wow. I don't believe Jacksonville is going to stick with that pick. I think they're going to get a quarterback, but I think they know they can get him late in the first round. They're going to be swapping picks with the Eagles and a second rounder. Um, And then I have the Eagles. Sorry, kid. I have the Eagles taking... Oh, God. The Eagles taking Jerry Judy, wide receiver out of Alabama. Nine Wonderlick score. A nine Wonderlick score. (laughs) <laughs> that means that literally means you cannot though. read or write. That's <laughs> incredible. Incredible. But he will fit in with most of Philly who also cannot read or write. So it's all good. <laughs> but I'll tell you this though. He's going to be in the top nine picks. So he's going to be able to read all them zeros. <laughs> all them zeros. Hey, he's got financial advisors. He's got agents. He'll be fine. Yeah, which means he'll be broke next week. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's what they're going to do. The Eagles need help at wide receiver. They finally got rid of Stonehands Agu- Aguilar. Um, but they need a big threat at the receiver position. Jerry Judy solves all of those problems for him. Carson Wentz needs somebody to throw to. For God's sake, Carson Wentz can throw the football. I am tired of hearing He about was He Wentz. was literally throwing to, like, Guys who they legitimately picked out of Walmart last year. I'm not even kidding. Like Pick them up right these off. guys came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, they really did. They picked them off like right off the street. They had no one, no one at all. Yeah. After just, Deshaun Jack, uh, after Deshaun Jackson got injured, Carson Wentz hits people in the hands. They just don't catch it. Yeah. No, you're right. Besides Zach Ertz, of course, but you need a deep threat. Zach Ertz is not your deep threat. So, 
I think Jerry he's needs to be the best athlete uh, in his uh, house. <laughs> I'll, I like that. I think that that's a good thing. I did. I, I also have a trade alert. Oh. Um, but, but I went a little bit different. I went with Tampa Bay trading up and. Jacksonville receiving the pick 14 in Tampa's third round pick, as well as a 2021 third round pick from uh, Tampa. All right. I have them gra- drafting Jedrick Wills out of, uh, I have Tampa drafting Jedrick Wills out of Alabama, 6'5", 320. He, right. um, he had a great season. Uh, a lot of people say that he's the best one, um, but Tampa needs to protect him. Yes. Uh they need to protect Brady. Brady is not used to having to run. He liked to hold the ball for a while. Tampa had the <laughs> worst offensive line, one of the worst offensive lines in the league. So I think they need to move up, and I think this is a move up at a – we need someone to protect Brady, so I think that they will move up. And he's coming from a Nick Saban system, so, you know, he's a disciplined guy, and I think you need a disciplined guy around um, Tom Brady. I do think that sure. either Andrew Thomas – or Judger Quills would be a good pick here. I just see them going Judger Quills. Okay. I actually like that. That actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because to me it was they they need they need to make sure they grab an offensive tackle. They protect him. He's Brady's forty three years old. He does not get hit a lot. And we saw this year he got hit more than usual and he wasn't the same. Right. So Especially with those two big weapons, you got Mike Evans, you got, uh, you got Goodwin, Goodwin. Am I getting that right? Godwin. 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 Yeah, yeah Godwin. You got those two uh, weapons and uh, a decent tight end. Though I hear that they're trying to trade OJ Howard. Yeah. You you need to protect him for this to happen. And your your running back's not great. I really do. So I think that. I, I think that this would be what Tampa needs to do. They're going to do anything to keep yeah. Tommy Brady happy. And in the second round, I would love to see them draft a running back. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, and I, I think that that's something that they will do. Um, a, a good catching running back is what they need. Because yeah. Brady yeah. loves to throw his running backs. He does. Yep. He, yeah, he doesn't. Does. He doesn't you want security. to the same person. You need to have exactly. that running back security blanket. Somebody to drop oh, yeah. it to for three, four, five yards. And that's what Tom Brady has made his career off of. So you 100% need okay. that. He's made his career off of being able to also be protected and not get hit. So they need to move up. I, I don't think uh, that you take you run the risk of one of those offensive linemen slipping by. I agree with you. So. I agree. That, that, that makes absolute sense. Especially with the next few teams coming up, they can all use an offensive lineman. Right, right, with and even Browns, even if you look, yes. you know, so yeah, and I mean, you know, even you know, Denver could use one. Denver could Denver use for, one. Denver needs everything. Exactly, and you never know what the Raiders are going to do. I think that this is just the smart thing to do. Um. So I, I, I went with them trading. And I think once Jacksonville sees that both those two, the three quarterbacks that they want, um, including Joe Burrow, aren't available, I think that they're going to move back. I don't think they're going to move up. So that's what I see with Jacksonville. We'll see what happens. Um, I think it's I think it might be a, a Hail Mary that I'm throwing there, but I could totally see Tampa pulling that off. Mm. I like it. I think both of those are good possible. I do see, no matter what, though, I do see Jacksonville trading out of that nine spot. Yeah, I could see it. I could see it either way, though. I could see you moving up or moving down. Yes. I could see it either way. Moving up for a quarterback or moving down for uh, whatever. Possible wide receiver. You never know if they're going to stick with Minshew or not. Yeah, I mean, they need they need a lot as well. All right, so we got... The Cleveland Browns next. Who you got the Cleveland Browns selecting? All right. I I think this is the one piece they're missing over in Cleveland. I have the the Browns taking offensive lineman Tristan Wirfs out of Iowa. Um, 
I oh, I think that's a great pick. First off, you know everyone you knows how I feel about Turf. Draft, but uh, I think he's going to fall to that spot, depending on if Jacksonville does trade with the Eagles, and depending on if the Cardinals go with Andrew Thomas. You know, it, 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 and it, and if and if the Giants don't pick. Yeah, that's very true. Because the, the Giants don't, don't pick the drafts out there that have the Giants taken Tristan Wirfs. A lot of them. A lot yeah. of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think if, if he's available, the Browns would absolutely jump all over Tristan Wirfs. No matter what, the Browns will be taking an offensive lineman. They have to protect it, Baker Mayfield. That kid can throw interceptions with ten seconds in the pocket. So right, right. they have to get him. And they didn't. And they did improve on the offensive line this year um, with Jack Conklin, but they still yep. need another guy. He'll do your right tackle. You need someone for your, your left tackle. Yep. Uh, he solves all, that, all of the issues on the Browns' offensive line. He closes that gap for you. And you can slide him over. I don't think he has any problem with that. So Yeah, he's very he's very versatile. I agree with you on that. I, as you know, don't have them taking him because I have – um, Arizona grabbing Tristan, but I have the Cleveland Browns selecting an offensive tackle, but I have them selecting um, Makai Becton. I don't think that the drug, um, the failed drug test is going to really scare Cleveland. Um, and I think yeah. Why would they're going to pick the f- by anything. Yes. They had Josh I mean, for and seven years. <laughs> for years. Uh, yeah. No, you're right. And they, I think it. <laughs> Well, their offensive tackle this year as well. Uh, Greg Robinson got caught with, oh, was it like 300 something, 178 pounds of weed? You remember that? Him and um, another player. But yeah, um, I think that they're going to pick the flashy pick. Okay. Uh, with Makai Beckton, 6'7, 369 pounds they have him as. I think he's over yes. 400 now. Yes. But. Uh, yeah, I, I can see them picking this just because he's the exciting pick, and that's what they do. They, they've been taking the exciting pick. I mean, Odell Beckham Jr. is not the best receiver, but he's exciting. He's flashy. He's exciting. He's flashy. Exactly. They like the, fla- they like the flashy. Baker Mayfield was probably not the best quarterback in that draft. He was the flashiest, most exciting. And I think that's what they're going to see with Makai Beckham. They need fans. They need people to watch. Yeah. That's their issue. They need people to come back to the dog pound. Those guys. Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. And not that anyone's going to buy a Mackay Beckton jersey, but they do the same thing. I mean, how many. I have seen more Browns OBJ jerseys in the past year than I probably have seen Jets jerseys. And I've been to two Jets games. <laughs> So, yeah, no, I, I think they're going to take this flashy pick. It's totally up their alley. I agree. Uh, and now I, I we got to, my... If Tristan Wirfs isn't available there, they're going to take Beckton. Without a doubt. Yeah, He's the yeah, next for sure. For sure. For sure. I agree. And, and like I said, any of these four offensive linemen can go anywhere. That yeah, is neat. Right, like exactly. it, it, they're all kind of interchangeable at this point. It really just depends on what, um, their say, like what they're gonna see. Um, for the Jets, who do you got the Jets taking? My beloved Jets. All right, for the Jets, I have them doing something a little bit different than what most people are expecting. I know you want that big offensive line. I however, go back and forth. However, I kind of have them going the same way I have the Giants going, where they have another need, and this is very important. So I have them taking Henry Ruggs the third, wide receiver out of Alabama. From your lips to God's ears. You know he's my favorite. <laughs> the Jets, I mean, for Jets other, need for all the purposes, I hope it's not. But. <laughs> the Jets need a big weapon. Darnold can throw the ball downfield, such as Danny Dimes can throw the ball downfield. 
it's a blessing and a curse. They need it because yeah. he'll he'll try to force it. And if he has Henry Ruggs open, that might help. I, I, I see what you mean. Yes, Henry Ruggs is a little bit taller. Uh, he has the length. I like his game. He's had two of throwing him the ball. Donald is accurate. He's just dumb sometimes, the same way Danny Dimes is. Um, I think Henry Ruggs can be that. He's, he, if Ruggs goes there, he automatically slides in as the number one receiver. Um, 100%. I, I love I, I love Ruggs. And if the Giants didn't have so many other problems, I would say that uh, I would want him. But uh, Ruggs, uh, that seems to be – I think that the Jets will go wide receiver – in this draft in the first round. I can see them possibly trading up for a high second round pick and solving some of those offensive line issues. But I do yeah. see I do see them taking a wide receiver in the first round. Um, and and Ruggs, they did work on their in their defense, they did work on their offense. Not like to where it's they did, perfect not, now, but they did work. But they brought in veteran guys that can play the position and that's what you need. On, that on you low budget Good. on budget deals. Yes. I 100% agree with you. I do think that they will take a wide receiver here. And you know me. I go back and forth if I want them to take a wide receiver, if I don't want them to take a wide receiver, if I want an offensive lineman. I, I go back and forth. I don't have them taking – I don't have them grabbing rugs, though. Uh, okay. I have them taking C.D. Lamb out of Very Oklahoma. Good he, Very good thing. He, That's yeah, he's – you know, he um, – he's big. He's 6'3", 195. Um, um, he he was very explosive. One most jump balls. Um, he was he was good. I, I was impressed by his film. I would much rather them grab a Henry Ruggs, um, but for my purposes, I hope it's C.D. Lamb, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs. I hope that's the list for financial reasons. Um, but but um, I I think they'll take C.D. Lamb, and I was very impressed by C.D. Lamb. At the combine, yes, because yes, the way he spoke, um, his demeanor—he's just a—he seems like he has it together. Um, he seems very humble. Like, I remember watching him at the combine, and he just said, "He said, you know, I'm just really happy to be here. This is so exciting." Mm. Um, and I think that that's something that the Jets need is as a young player who's. Humble, but also has that edge. Right. Similar, right, right. similar to a uh, Saquon Barkley. And I mean, his yeah. his season stats are awesome. 62 oh, touchdowns, 1,327 yeah. yards, 14 touch. And, I'm sorry, 62 receptions, 14 touchdowns, 1,327 yards. Um, he he was he was good. He was really good. And then his and then he's sophomore year he had 65 receptions 1,158 yards um, his average catch this year was 21 yards and that's great for Sam Darnold but it could also be a curse for Sam Darnold yeah. um, but they do have a little slot guy uh, Jamison Crowder who had a great year last year so I mm -hmm. think that this will fill that Robbie Anderson type hole except you are upgrading to younger fat, uh, better and uh, I'm excited to see if they do draft C.D. Lamb. So, yeah. that's who I think the Jets are going to go with. C.D. Lamb, okay. Yeah, yeah I, sure. I do believe they will end up with a wide receiver just because, you, like you said, you got to fill those shoes of missing out on Robbie Anderson now. Um, so, yeah, I do believe they will go wide receiver. Uh, yeah, for sure. And C.D. is actually a, a bigger. I, I didn't realize that. Henry Ruggs was so small. He's 5'11". He's 5'11". Yeah, he's small. And they have someone similar to Ruggs, uh, not as anywhere near as um, talented, mm -hmm. but Jamison Crowder, had, he was his number one receiver last year. He had yeah. a good season. So I think, and they have him on a good deal. Um, not that, you know, the rookie deals are already put into their cap space and whatever, but he, and he's a good leader. So I, I think they'll go with someone like CeeDee Lamb. A little bit more explosive, uh, much more f fun to to think about than to have 
you know, having a deep ball threat than to have a little a, a little guy who he could throw a four yarder or two, which mm-hmm. you know I I appreciate. But I think right. it's more exciting C D Lamb. I do have C D uh, I do have C D Lamb coming up. I can give you okay. that. <laughs> I figured that. I figured that. Yeah. yeah, these three guys again, same same as those offensive tackles. Um, not really that they're interchangeable, but yes, the teams they they each kind of have a team that you you know. I mean, you went um similar to I initially today. I switched my draft. I had the Jets trading back with the Eagles, and the Eagles grabbing CD Lamb. Okay, but I decided against it. I thought the Jets were going to stick where they are. So right. coming up, the the Eagles might have. You know, might be a trade up with the Eagles. So we got the Raiders next. The the new Las Vegas Raiders. Who? What do you think? What are you thinking? Well, for the Raiders, I have them taking C.D. Lamb, wide receiver out of Oklahoma. Um, I looked a little bit into C.D. Lamb's story, and he fits the Raiders' system. We know how John Gruden likes to get those guys who have been through things, who have who have that extra grit. Um, according to what I read, C.D. Lamb, um, he lived in New Orleans. I didn't know this. He was born in uh, in Louisiana. He lived in New Orleans, and then his family had to leave. Um, he had they had to leave New Orleans because of Hurricane Katrina. Um, oh wow! Yeah, um, and they they evacuated to to Houston actually. Um, so I look at that story, and it, it kind of just fits that whole John Gruden system of these players that have been through life, they've experienced hardships. Um, that's that John Gruden system. Uh, Josh Jacobs story is a great story to to read into. Um, oh, that story is incredible. Yeah, no, you're 100% right about that. And he had a killer year. Yeah, so I think he just fits their system. And I think that that would be the guy they would go with. Um, they need to fill that wide receiver spot. Uh, shoes have been empty over there for a while. So I think C.D. Lamb and, would be the place. And an exciting name. An exciting name to bring to a yeah. new stadium, I mean. Absolutely. Yeah, I I have the Raiders also selecting a wide receiver, but I thought this guy was more the Raiders way um, with Jerry Judy. Okay. Um, you know he's he has already gotten himself into a little bit of trouble. I don't know if you remember the combine. Um, yes. he was wearing a Star of David, and people said, "Ah, oh, why are you wearing the Star of David?" And he said, "Cause my friends nicknamed me Jew, so I wear the Star of David." I. Um, these guys. Yeah, so I think also Alabama guys just in general did not do well in the Wonder League. I think Tua got a 13, but that's besides the point. Um, he, he wore the Star of David because he only knows symbols since he can't read or write. <laughs> that could be it. Um, and he probably didn't know about Judaism, so he didn't think that this was a fact. Yeah. This was... Friends just told him to do it. Um, no, but uh, I think that he is exciting. He's a great route one runner. Um, and mm-hmm. someone that you're gonna need for your quarterback of the future, which they don't have right now. But I'm sure in the next draft or maybe even in the later rounds, they will address their um, you know, quarterback of the future. Mm-hmm. So I have I have him taking uh, Jerry Judy. All right. And that's very possible as well. Right. But as well, the Raiders will take a wide receiver. So 13, we have the defending NFC champs with yes. San Francisco. They got this after trading DeForest Buckner to the Indianapolis Colts. Right. For the 49ers, I took... Them taking Justin Jefferson, wide receiver out of LSU. Um, wow, you think <laughs> that I'm I'm speechless. Sorry, hold on. I'm that that made me speechless. 
Um, Justin Jefferson going 13? Yeah. Yes. That's um, your boy, I know. Reason being, I think the 49ers are going to take a wide receiver. Uh, with the recent loss of, uh, the hell is his name? Emmanuel Sanders. Emmanuel Sanders. They're going to take a wide receiver, and uh, I'm out of wide receivers. <laughs> um, oh, okay. I already had Judy leave, Ruggs, Lamb. Uh, Justin Jefferson is the next best receiver out of the crew. Uh, love this kid. Love him out of LSU. San Francisco needs to fill that void. Uh, they got to get... Um, Garfunkel, I almost called him. <laughs> they need to get Garoppolo. Jimmy Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, that guy's good looking. He's a good looking man. Um, oh, yes, he is. Yeah, wow. he's he's a dreamboat. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I agree. I think they need another weapon for him. Uh, yeah. Debo Samuels had killer year, though. Um, yeah. So for someone to compliment like, each other... Um, I think Justin Jefferson would be a good pick for San Francisco. However, I can't see Justin Jefferson going that high. So I have um, a trade alert. I have Uh-oh. San Fran. Uh, yeah. I have San Fran uh, trading with the Philadelphia Eagles, receiving pick twenty-one and the third round and a third round pick. Um, right. And I have the Philadelphia Eagles selecting Henry Ruggs. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. So I, I mean, I know they have it. Like Deshaun, Deshaun Jackson's a similar player to Ruggs. Yes. Um, but I think they would move up to get someone as because a lot of people are saying Henry Ruggs should be number one. So I can see Philly coming and and again, if especially if Chase Young is going to be attacking you tw- twice a year. Why don't yeah. you have a, a quick option? So right. I could see them doing that. And I think that San Fran is like, all right, we'll just take more draft picks and reload. Let's get another 17 running backs. <laughs> it's kind of like what the Falcons did in uh, the year they went to the Super Bowl. Was that 15? Uh, 16, I think. 16. No, no, no. Yeah. 16 to 17 it was. Yeah, when they had the, the five-headed running back. <laughs> the, the 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 Falcons, you say? Yeah. Yeah, they... Oh, they had yeah. Coleman, well, they had... Um, oh, jeez. Freeman. Fre- Freeman, Coleman, and they had... Who the hell was that? They had number three, too. They really... Yeah. Oh, um... Yeah. Not Coleman. It was no, no. It was Coleman, and it was uh, I think Bre- Breda wasn't it? Breda, Breda. I think it was actually. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so I think Philly Philly moves up to grab their wide receiver of the future. All right. So for fourteen, we both have the Jack. Well, no, we both don't have the Jaguars, but we had a trade. Uh, I had a who, who was the initial 14? Oh, 14 is Tampa. Sorry, Tampa. I had a trade back. Um, yes, you had. I, I had them. So I have the Jaguars um, grabbing Javon Kinlaw, defensive tackle out of South Carolina. It's, again, their biggest need. Yes, and they can grab him. Uh, he's. A player, big, six six three ten. I know we talked about him. Um, yeah, year at South Carolina, he is scary. Also, great. Another person who had a great story too. I believe he was homeless. Um, yes. For a while. Yes. So, um, good career. Um, you you need young player. You need people who want to be in t- in Jacksonville right now. Everyone wants to leave. So. Uh, yeah. You know, he. I think that he's the, their guy of the future. Uh, and I, you know, he's super big. He's like a bull rusher. Um, he's got an explosive first step. And 
he just fits that system so well. And if you want to rebuild that up, the defense, because that defense took a beating this year as well. You know, yeah. they, they traded. He had six stacks this year. Um, and I think he's just going to grow. I think that once he gets more coaching, I think he's going to be absolutely incredible. Um, so All right. I can't wait to see him. I, I hopefully, hopefully Jack Jaguars are able to keep him. This is another guy that I'm like, he's great. Only problem is he's going to Jacksonville. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, so you're 14, you have Tampa. Who do you have Tampa taking? I have Tampa taking Makai Becton, offensive lineman out of Louisville. Uh, I went to the same road as you, just got there a little bit later. Uh, <laughs> who did you have them taking? I had them taking Jedrick Wills. Jedrick Wills. Yeah, um, this is where I thought Becton would fall to. Um. I know it was a Bill Belichick kind of thing where they would take, like, the uh, the outcast and try to fix him. But I think that's also a Brady type of thing. Um, yeah, Brady is really good friends with Antonio Brown, so. Right. Depending on what the uh, the outcome is of this drug test and everything, uh, Becton, I think he ends up in, in Tampa. Got to have somebody to protect Brady. Uh, and I think they can steal him at 14, I think, you know. Because of this whole little conversation we're having here about uh, a failed drug test at the combine, so I think they could steal him there. The uh, Buccaneers absolutely have to protect that ageless wonder. <laughs> yeah, Tom Brady, I I agree with you on that, and I could see. I actually do have an off, one of those four offense tackles. Um. Coming up next to you, so you could obviously, I, I already picked right. three of them, so the last one. But um, I could see one sliding to them, but I, mm -hmm. I don't know if they want to take that risk. Yeah. That was my main thing with them trading, is I don't know if they want to take that risk. Though mm -hmm. I do think that one would have slid to them, if, but I think they have to be aggressive, but I think that's a great pickup. And again, depending on the details of this failed drug test and you know, we don't know his Wonderlick score or anything like that, but I think that that could um, play a play a role in him flipping back. Right. So now we got now we got the Denver Broncos at fifteen. Who you got the Broncos taking? Did you give me your fourteen pick? Yeah, I did. I oh. I went ahead of you. I I messed up. I I picked Javon <laughs> Kinlaw for like, the Jaguars. <laughs> yes, that's right. Okay. I skipped, 15, my, I skipped your turn. Yeah, no worries. I'll allow it this time. <laughs> at More 15, probation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at 15, I have the Broncos doing something different than I thought I was going to have them do. I thought I was going to have them boost up their offense, but I thought we can con continue to uh, build that defense. So I have the Broncos taking Derek Brown, defensive lineman, out of Auburn. I, I completely forgot that you haven't had him drafted yet. <laughs> I was thinking you were going a different route with the defense because I thought it was going to be the one guy because I was fighting, but I completely forgot that you didn't have him yet. Yeah, so that's the best defensive player available in the draft at 15, in my in my draft. Um, Probably. Probably also the best available player, just oh, in general. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, I have the Broncos taking him, building up that defense a little bit. Um, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. At number 15, Derek Brown has a complete steal. I was torn oh, oh, with yeah, fighting. Sure. I, was, I was fighting at number 7 for the Panthers to take uh, Derek Brown. But uh, the next team up that needed a D lineman was the Broncos. So, and it was eight picks later. So it just happens that way sometimes, where a really good player slips low in the draft. Um, I agree with you. It does happen. You know. So I mean, we saw that. We saw that with. I mean, Jamal Adams was like 
the best player in the draft, and he didn't get drafted until like number six or seven. Yes. Um, but we, yeah, we see that all the time. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, uh, yeah. Ben Roethlisberger, like we see it all the time. Yeah. So it's not too crazy not to see that. Um, I mean, so, most years, Justin Herbert is the number one pick. Are you trying to get me mad? Because that, <laughs> that's what it seems like you're doing. A little bit. That's what I do. Uh, I'm an indicator. Oh, God. <laughs> don't get that. Watch him have, like, a Hall of Fame career, and you're going to be like, remember that time you said he was terrible? And be like, no, he was great. I, I always said he was great. Uh, uh, let's, rec- let's remind us today. What is today? April 18th, 2020. I will just be all of, you can just put all up. of April 2020. <laughs> just all of April 2020. I've done this. God, um, God living 20 years from now on the Lose Your Ass podcast, I will be still bringing up the time you said Justin Herbert was a bust. It's gonna be it's gonna be his Hall of Fame thing. Um so for Denver Broncos, I have them going uh Andrew Thomas, offensive tackle, and again, same as you, this is an absolute steal. I think yeah. I think yeah. Andrew Thomas should be definitely put higher, but in the latest mock drafts and you know, everyone talking and listening to things because it's all I have I see him sliding back. And I normally wouldn't have put Denver with an offensive tackle because I think they have other needs. However, I can't, I can't let him slip that far back. And I think Denver has a young quarterback and they need to protect him as well. So I haven't uh, taken Andrew Thomas out of Georgia. Uh, this is an absolute steal. Don't forget the Broncos need a new quarterback in general. Oh, you just don't like Drew Locke. Drew Locke had a great year last year when he was playing. Come on, I don't man. Like him. he had a good he had a good year. He had a good year when he was playing. I, it could be a fluke, but the last time we saw someone take over the second half of the season, he won the MVP this year. So um, maybe put, I'm just saying d- different situations, but Lamar Jackson took over. Second half of his, both took over for Joe Flacco. Oh my God, we didn't even mention that. Yes. yes. Oh my God, look, put your money for Drew Locke for MVP next year. <laughs> what was that? A dollar wins a million. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably, but yeah, no, I think you gotta, I think you gotta protect Drew Locke, even uh. if you're feeling like. They might change quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. You need to protect. It's going to be a young quarterback anyway. Or even yeah. if it's not, even if you're doing another Peyton Manning type situation, you still need to protect your old guy too. You just got to protect your quarterback. Eli so, Manning? Eli Manning coming back, going to the Broncos? Question mark? Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. He's like, I am so glad that I'm done. Just, I have to bring this up. Do you know... Who I delivered to one day at FedEx? Justin Tuck? No. Eli oh. Manning. Did you really? I did. Whoa. Was he cool? Or you didn't yeah. even see him? He was really cool. Um, Abby, his wife, she's usually the one that's home. But, um, like, I see her all the time. Very rarely do you see Eli. I've been seeing him more and more lately. He's always running down the street. He jogs a lot. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, like, I always honk the horn. Eli, he waves. He's pretty cool. He's a nice guy. Um, but, yeah, I, uh, I'm i not going to mention what route I'm on or where. No, 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 no. I, I, would, I wouldn't ask. I wouldn't ask. Yeah. But, but uh, um, I get to deliver to him pretty frequently. I, I really- mean, he's always done the right thing. Too. He's he's always been he's like my dad's favorite. Yeah, yeah, I love Eli. So All right, and now that leads us to our last pick of this first half of our draft extravaganza podcast. It's coming to so an for end. number six it is. It is. It's been fun. It has so, every second of this. <laughs> So with Atlanta's pick, do you have them trading? Do you have them? What do you have them doing? I have them taking their pick. Okay, let's see. Let's hear this. You might be surprised by this one too. 
I have them taking from my beautiful Go Tigers, Clavon Chasen. The edge. I'm not not that surprised by that. Really? I'm not. All right, cool. Not that surprised by it. I've just seen so many mock drafts where he's been projected to go later in the first round. Um, I think you need that guy. They need more effort on that defensive side of the football with the Falcons. Um, now, I was tempted. Don't call me crazy. I was tempted for them to draft a per- possible Jordan Love in this spot. Somebody future ready to take over for Matt Ryan. Um Matt Ryan's like one of my favorite quarterbacks of all time. I know. I That's Matt why Ryan. I can do it, because I love Matt Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I like that pick. I, I could see that happening. I didn't go that way. I went. I mean, I think you could guess with who I went with for the Atlanta Falcons. Hold on. Uh, CJ Henderson. Uh, but, uh, right, oh, no. sorry. I should have let you back. guess. <laughs> Is that who you would have guessed? No. Is that who you would have guessed? No, no. that's not who I was going to guess. Who would you have guessed? Who I was going to guess. guess. Uh, Justin Jefferson. <laughs> they oh, don't no. need a wide receiver. They have it Calvin is- Ridley and Julio Jones. I know. That's why I, I have to really quick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Justin Jefferson's on your mind, man. All the time. He's I know. A handsome Love young man. He's so cute. <laughs> he is very handsome. He's a handsome young man. Yes. All of the LSU guys are. <laughs> All right. We get it. <laughs> Why do you think my are a fan? Cute yeah. <laughs> boys. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not a big fan of TJ Henderson. You know how I feel about a cornerback who doesn't have any interceptions like he didn't have any interceptions this year who but he had a lot of passes to fly cj henderson oh okay i'm like uh, sorry i got mixed up with what the hell are you talking about sorry cj henderson had no uh interceptions this year um but he's young yes and he had four his freshman year mm-hmm. So, you know, that could, that could change. Um, and it's, it's simply, it's just, he's the best available, um, and it's the position they need. So don't, it was just a simple pick. Don't think that that interception, don't look too much into that, because you got to remember, Florida has one of the best D-lines in the country. Very rarely you get a quarterback dropping back and not getting sacked. That's second, true. And, second, he, and he, he did no have 11 passes. To the hit side of the field. That's sure, but and he's but he's also not the best tackler, but he's just the best available. I mean, he's the best available. I can see him sliding into a it's safe the position. Team. I mean, it's it's the position they need. Mhm. So I mean, yeah, it's. But he's the it, best available. It, it just, it's a it's a boor- it's a it's a boring pick. But Clayvon Chasen was not like I thought you were gonna go crazy and pick like a. I don't even know what like a I almost cornerback. <laughs> or maybe a running back because Atlanta needed a running back too. But that is what I thought. Like but I, I thought about that, but the, the nearest running back that I seen was gonna go early to middle second round. Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It would so, be sick though. The Falcons it would could be trade up for trade up for a second round pick and and grab a running back. It would be sick though if they ended up with D- D- uh, Swift and Curly, two Georgia boys. That'd be sick. Yeah, I, that's who I was gonna go with. DeAndre Swift was gonna be my pick. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if that happened. Let's put that on record that most likely the Falcons will draft DeAndre Swift. I'm not. Um, I'm putting that on. 
I'm putting that on. Oh my god, on record. Uh, you could you could put that on record. I already have enough records with me saying Justin Herbert's gonna be a bust. I don't need any more <laughs> records of me saying I'm stupid gonna, stuff. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say the Falcons will sign a running back before they sign a quarterback. Sign or draft? Draft. draft. Well, when oh, they yeah. draft, they still 100%. sign. But. They're gonna. Oh yeah, yeah. no, no, no. They're a, a <laughs> running back before a cornerback or a quarterback. Cornerback. Oh no. No, no, no. I don't think so. Because you said they're taking the quarterback. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say running back. <laughs> uh, we'll see when we'll see when that day comes. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe in this, maybe. No, they don't. I don't think they don't have. I just realized Atlanta doesn't have their second round pick. They traded it. Really? They got. Um, yeah, they traded it for Hayden Hurst. What a brilliant move. I. <laughs> and Hayden Hurst isn't young. Like he came into the league when he was right. twenty five. Yeah. And he just hasn't lived up to potential. Maybe he will. I, I mean they didn't I sign second round pick either. What? I no, he know. was a first round pick. I don't think the Giants have a second round pick this year. You sure? No, we have to. No, you definitely do. I think you have a a confidence. So whatever. Yeah, we have like a couple, third round pick. Second round picks. Because we have your third round pick. The Jets have your third round pick. For snacks. For snacks. Yeah, when we got snacks from you guys. Oh, Williams. Yeah. yeah. No, Harrison. No, Leonard Williams. That's when we got. The, that's when you guys took the third round pick. Yeah. You sons of bitches. <laughs> and then you franchise tag them. But that's for another thing. That's for another day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have officially finished our first half of this draft extravaganza. This we it. will be back with our second half of this draft extravaganza tomorrow night. Right, and apparently James has a lot of trades going on. In the second half, so I do. Hope, hope to uh, is not one team keeping their pick. You heard it here first. So we will be back tomorrow night with the second half of this draft extravaganza. All right.